In this video, we're going to overclock and benchmark a Radeon HD 6570 graphics card. The HD 6570 is a low-powered, entry-level card first introduced in early 2011. It's still available for sale even today at just slightly under original retail price. While I certainly wouldn't recommend anyone go out and purchase one of these cards today, as there are far superior, more modern options available, this card is from a generation that is known to be highly overclockable. So I'm thinking, can we maybe squeeze some no frills 720p performance from this little guy? Let's tweak this thing, run some tests, and find out. So, what are we dealing with? The Radeon HD 6570 is based on the Turks Pro graphics processor, has 480 shading units, and supports DirectX 11.2. This card runs at 650 MHz core clock and between 500 and 1000 MHz memory clock. The card comes in both low profile and full height versions, featuring passive, single fan, and dual fan cooling solution. The HD 6570 comes with 1 gig, 2 gig, or 4 gigabytes of DDR3, GDDR3, or GDDR5 memory. The example card we have here is the Saplos Radeon HD 6570 1 gig. So let's get ready to overclock and benchmark this little scrapper and see what kind of frame rates we can pull out of it. The first thing we're going to want to do is update the drivers. Let's pop over to AMD real quick and grab the latest ones. Now that our drivers are nice and updated, the next step is to install an overclocking program called MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is a completely free tool that gives you a high level of control and monitoring over your graphics card. It's made by the company MSI, but in no way do you have to use it with an MSI brand of card or anything like that. Now that MSI Afterburner is installed, let's run through the key settings we'll be using. For this card, we'll be focusing on the core clock and memory clock values from the middle section here. We can see that the fan speed is currently set to auto. You can turn this off and manually select the fan speed, but for this video, we're just going to leave it on auto. One thing we'll most likely need to do for many of these older AMD cards is extend the overclocking limit. To do this, first go to Properties, then check the box labeled Extend Official Overclocking Limits. You'll then need to reboot your computer to open up a larger range of possible overclocks. Now that that's done, let's check out the other features. You can reset your settings back to default by clicking on the reverse arrow at the bottom. Once you're satisfied with your changes, you can click the check button to apply them. You can save your current settings to a profile by clicking the save button, then clicking on one of the profiles along the right hand side. Finally, you can have the current settings automatically apply at Windows startup by clicking the window icon in the upper right corner. Now I'm going to put a list of known successful HD 6570 overclocks on the screen as well as in the description. Every card is different, but this should give you a good starting point for potential overclock values that may work for you. Now that we've locked in some potential overclock settings, we're going to want to test them. We're going to run through five programs with benchmarks to test our overclocks for stability and performance. What I'll do first is run through all five benchmarks using stock settings to obtain base level performance numbers. Then I'll select a minor initial increase in both core clock and memory clock settings. I'll then run through the Unigen benchmark tool over and over while increasing the overclock values slightly each time. Once the settings have been pushed too far and I start seeing crashing, graphical glitches, or any type of odd behavior, I'll dial back the settings to what they were just previously when everything was still working smooth. At this point, I now have a solid idea of where the sweet spot is for overclocking my particular card. I can either stick with these settings or try tweaking things just a little further. After about a dozen tests, this particular card was able to reach a solid overclock of 740 MHz core clock and 640 MHz memory clock. Not really as much as I had expected. Still, it does seem like a decent boost, so let's run through each of the five benchmarks to see how the HD 6570 performed. First up, it's Unigen Superposition Benchmark Tool. Running at the 720p low preset, initial results achieved a score of 774. After overclocking, the score improved to 945. This represents an increase of 22.1%. So, it's actually looking pretty good so far. Next up, we've got CSGO Benchmark Map. Running at 720p with all the settings turned down to the lowest values, the initial test achieved an overall average FPS of 44.2. After overclocking, average FPS increased to 54.7. That's an increase of 23.8%. So another solid boost to performance to be had here. Benchmark number three is Grand Theft Auto V Benchmark. Running at 720p, 50% resolution scaling, and everything turned down as low as it would go, our initial average FPS 
was 40.3. After overclock, average FPS increased to 48.6. That's an increase of 20.6%. So an impressive boost to performance here as well. Fourth on the list is Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker Benchmark Tool. Running at the 720p standard preset, initial results achieved a score of 1616, or low rating. After overclocking, the score improved to 1962, also low rating. This represents an increase of 21.4%. An excellent increase, but perhaps still not quite a smooth playable experience here. For Benchmark 5, we have Borderlands 3 Benchmark. Running at 720p, 50% resolution scaling, and everything turned down to the lowest settings, the initial average FPS achieved was 17.2. After overclocking, overall average FPS increased to 20.5. That's an increase of 19.2%. A solid increase for sure, but still a bit short of an actual playable experience here as well. So there you have it, the Radeon HD 6570 in all its glory. A card a bit past its prime, but an impressive overclocker nonetheless. Please feel free to leave a comment, and thanks so much for watching.